Hey folks, I'm Tom Basil, Jason Levine. And there's been a lot of uh, important things that have happened in history, but one of the most interesting and scariest is the 13-day Cuban Missile Crisis, in which the world stood on the brink of World War III with nuclear weapons. I don't believe either of us was alive when this happened. No, I wasn't either. Okay, just, just checking. Um, and, but I'm a big fan of historical games, but I'm always a little nervous because a lot of historical games are extremely complex or sometimes, or they sometimes go to the other extreme and gloss over everything. This one caught my eye because a lot of people were talking about it and saying things like, this is the, uh, it's, twi it's Twilight Struggle, but fast. And Twilight Struggle is like in my top 30 games. I think it's pretty high for you too, yeah, right? Yeah, Twilight Struggle is the Cold War game. And in fact, um, it was President Kennedy who first started the, using the Cold War term Twilight Struggle, which is how they named Twilight Struggle. And now President Kennedy is obviously involved, was involved in 13 Days as well. All right, well, this is from Jolly Roger Games. They're not often known for making um, that many games. I mean, they make a few games. They do make historical games. They make a few of them, but this, I, I wasn't expecting this type of game from them. Let's see if it's any good. The goal of this game is to have the most prestige after three rounds. After three rounds, we have the aftermath of the whole thing. And we're going to see whose side the prestige is on. It's kind of like a tug of war here. At the beginning of each round, you're going to look. There's three DEF CON tracks here. Uh, there is a military one, which corresponds to Berlin, Atlantic, and Cuba. There is the political one, which corresponds to Italy, Turkey, and Cuba. There, And there is a... Uh, world Opinion, which Alliances, United Nations, and Television. So all these will go up one. These are the, they're, they're set up in the starting spots. Each person also has influence cubes. The United States player has two influence cubes here. The USSR player has three influence cubes there. Each player is going to draw three agenda cards, and they're secretly going to look at them. So let's say I'm the USSR player, and I look at these, and I have political, DEF contract, military DEF contract, and Cuba. So I would put one here on the political DEF contract, one of my symbols, one on the military one, and one on Cuba. The United States player will draw three, and they have Atlantic, personal letter, and Turkey. So Atlantic would go here, Turkey would go here, and United and the personal letter would go on the United Nations spot. Uh, so what each player is going to do is they're going to secretly pick one of these. That's going to be that kind of the agenda that they're going to go for. They're going to put this on their agenda side here. And then, uh, you, so the other player knows the three possible spots that they're going for, but they don't know which one exactly. The other ones are put back in this pile, which will be shuffled and dealt out each round. So it's possible you'll see these agendas again. After this, each player is going to be dealt five strategy cards. While the, whoever is doing worse here decides the initiative. It's a, it's a tie. The USSR player decides. And then each player is going to play. One person will play a card. Then the other person plays a card. You're each going to play four cards. And your fifth cards, you will each place a card here in Aftermath. So when you play a card, there are 13 of each type of card. There are 13 USSR cards. There are 13 USA cards. And there are 13 neutral cards. When you play a card, you can play it for command, which has to do with the cubes here, or you can play it for the event. You can only play it for the event if it is your side, so the USSR player can play this event, or you can play the U United Nations cards for their event. If the United States plays a USSR card, or vice versa, for the command, they have to give the card to their opponent. So if the USA wants to play this for two command, he can use that two command, but he gives it to the USSR player, and they can decide to do this event before or after uh, the USA player uh, is going to use the command. So what is command? Command is going to be one, two, or three cubes. If you have the personal letter, you can give it to your opponent uh, to get an extra cube beyond that. And when you have these cubes, you can add them to one battleground here. So if I played a three, I can put one, two, or three in the same spot on the board. Uh, you don't have to put up to three. Or you can pull one, two, or three off the board but you can't do both. So you either add or do both. If you put 
or pull one cube, you're fine. If you put or pull two or three or even four cubes, so let's say I put three cubes here in the Atlantic. That's two more than my allotted number, which would be one. So then I have to move up, this is orange, so I would move up the appropriate DEF contract for me by two. So when you pull off though, let's say I pulled off two blue cubes in another turn, that's one more than I, I'm supposed to. So then I would bring it down by one. So you're constantly rearranging your DEF CON levels. Why do you want to arrange them? Because at the end of every round, you're going to look at your DEF CON levels after everything else has been satisfied. And if, if you have one of your tokens in DEF CON 1, you lose. And if you have all three of your tokens up to DEF CON 2 or higher, you also lose. So you need to make sure that you're down on some of these, at least by the end of a turn. So players are going to go back and forth and play these cards. Let me show you some of the things. Deflate all your DEF CON tracks by one step. The command three influence cubes onto one military battleground. Here, if the U.S. political DEF CON track is in the DEF CON 3, place up to one influence cube on all political battlegrounds. So those are the kind of cards that can be played as you do different things. After players have played four, like I said, they put their fifth card here. And then you're going to resolve each of these purple ones. Whoever has more cubes here will take the letter if they don't have it. Whoever has more cubes here can add or subtract one from one of their own DEF CON tracks. And whoever has the most cubes here will draw the top strategy card, look at it, and either discard it or place it in the aftermath pile. Then you will reveal each agenda card. So let's say, for example, this is how Cuba looks at the end of a round, and the agenda is, uh, well, that's Turkey. Oh, no, here's the agenda for Cuba. Let's say that Cuba was the secret agenda. So we look, USA has two, Russia has one, two minus one is one, so Russia, so USA would move over one. And the other one was Turkey, so Turkey, USA has one, Russia has none, so USA would get another point. So you're going to always want to try to control these and have a greater majority. If it had been one of these tracks, let's say it was this track here, you can see that the blue is three ahead of the red, so then blue would get three points there on the prestige track. So you're always constantly having this tug of war back and forth, and you will do this three rounds in a row. At the end of the third round, you will reveal all the aftermath, add up the cubes on the cards for each side. Whichever side has more gets two prestige up here, and whoever has most prestige wins. If it's a tie, then whoever holds the personal letter wins the game. Now, I should mention, this game comes with a rule set, and in the rule set, they actually give an entire uh, playthrough of the game. So if you're not sure what to do, you can go through that, and it also gives a nice brief history of the Cuban Missile Crisis, which explains some of the background and also talks about what each card means historically. Okay, so first of all, I was kind of impressed with the speed of the game. It is not a long game. It says 45 minutes. And I think even if you carefully think over your actions, like really think, it will be 45 minutes. Yes, even less. I think you could probably play this in 30 if you sat down and knew the rules. It's a quick game and it, packs a lot of meat in that time. It's not, oh, it's a quick game, it glosses over. This packs a lot of meat, there's a lot of choices in it for a game that's light or lighter on the card-driven game end. And I think that it works very well. Now, one thing that's really interesting about this game for me is that I really love Twilight Struggle. We already mentioned that, and, and I know that that might sound confusing, but there's a couple of things. First, I like the Cold War. I grew up at the end of the Cold War. It's a very big impression on me, and that, that thing's in, this is intriguing to me where you're, you're fighting, but you're fighting with words and diplomacy and maybe small skirmishes and stuff. And that theme is very strong in this one. Maybe not as strong as Twilight Struggle, but it's still pretty strong. But what's fascinating is when we first start playing this, I was like, oh, this is like Twilight Struggle. This is like Twilight Struggle. And then suddenly we realized it's not quite. In Twilight Struggle, there's a chance that a player can lose by going to DEF CON 1, but it's very rare. You have to really either, you're, you, have to, you have to be super clever to get your opponent to do it, or really just foolish, make foolish decisions on your own part. In this game, it is a very high possibility. Yes, you're out there, you're, you're doing things, and it's building up, and it feels like at any second, the nukes can go off, and those levels are going up, those levels are going up. And what you really need to be careful about is you need to sometimes pull back and say, I cannot do something, I need to pull back in order to get my levels back down so we don't go to war. And 
it's a very interesting like ebb and flow mechanic of the defcon chart in this which adds a lot to the game and the strategies of what you're going to do and where you're going to do it because you can't just keep putting things everywhere if you start going everywhere you're going to be in a lot of trouble right and you actually have to pull back a lot in this game i mean it, you're gonna have to make a lot of decisions like all right i'm gonna pull back from here but you don't worry about it too much because your opponent also is pulling back from there now this game uses a similar mechanism that many card driven games do where you play a card and it can do something good for you, but also can help your opponent out. That's always been a big, I'm a big fan of that. I think this game has some interesting ways. You can keep one card for your opponent and throw it away at the end of each round, but you're essentially giving him two points at the end of the game, um, which could be the difference between it. Or you can just give them the things, try to give them to them when they hurt you the least. Uh, I, I wonder if replayability on this is going to be huge because there is that m fewer cards. I think the replayability will be fine because using the agendas and knowing what agendas you're going to go for is going to change the game each time because depending what agenda you pick and where you're going with your cubes, it's a very different game each time. Okay, well, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to give this one some pretty high thumbs up. I think the, the component quality is fine. Uh, I mean, it's just cubes and discs and cards, but it's really easy to set up. It's a nice bit of back and forth bluff like okay I, I know one of the three things that I mean I know three different possibilities that Jason's going for which one is he picking well it seems like this one's pretty obvious but that might just be a bluff to make me commit forces there I, I find that interesting to try to outguess the other person but it's not that stressful if that makes sense exactly but it's enough there's enough in here there's enough of where are they going what are they doing to give it a good amount of attention for, as we keep saying, for a quick playing, short card driven game, there is a lot of detail in this one and it works well. And I really feel that this, this is solid. This, this reminds me, it reminds me not so much of Twilight Struggle. I mean, it does, but it reminds me more of 1960, the making of the president. Well, that's an interesting comparison. Another thing I, I think is interesting, this is an area control game to many degrees, but in many area control games, you're just like, blah, 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 put out as much stuff as you can. Here you're like, okay, I'm going to put stuff out, but now I need to pull it back. And usually you don't do that in many games. But in this one, sometimes I'll be like, Jason, you can put out three cubes. He's like, I, I, don't, I don't really want to. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. And since you have a finite number of resources too, that's very cool. And the agendas really push the flow of the game. So if early on the agenda was in Cuba, there's lots of buildup in Cuba for that agenda. And then Cuba will not come out again because the Cuba agenda has already happened. So people are now... Well, we built up in Cuba. Now we got to pull back in Cuba and build up in Italy. And so the build up changes each turn based on the agendas and what agendas are still out there and what agendas aren't still out there, which, which is why I feel that there's going to be a lot of replayability in this game. All right. So what, what rating would you give it? This one, I really like it. This is one that I would pull out again and again, and I want to give it an awesomest rating of nine. Wow. Okay. I was not expecting that. I'm going to give this one an awesomest rating of 7.5, which is pretty good. It's a very solid game. It's fun. I would really prefer to play the deeper Twilight Struggle or 1989. However, I realize that those also take a long time and require, you know, someone who has a lot of commitment. This is easier to pull out. I could play this with a lot more people. So I'm certainly recommending it in that regard. Let's hope this situation never happens again. But the game itself is fun. 13 days. Yep. Next time we go to Cuba, it'll be hopefully on a vacation now that they're opening those ports. All right. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And you've been watching 13 Days at the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.